I am, you likely know about all the common guitar pedals and gear that he would have used, whether that's a Tube Screamer or a Leslie or a Dumble Amplifier or Fender Amplifiers or Fuzzes or Wah Wahs. We pretty much know the gamut of most of the stuff that we typically associate with Stevie Ray Vaughan. However, there's one device that is almost never talked about and was a pretty quintessential part of most of the early sounds of Stevie Ray Vaughan and was used on a lot of the really hit classic records that defined him as an artist. And I see very little evidence of this ever being talked about when it comes to Stevie Ray Vaughan's gear. And there's some great channels on YouTube that talk about his gear and don't really mention this component. So today what I wanna talk about is the key missing link to achieving the studio sound of Stevie Ray Vaughan and how you can incorporate a pedal that's actually available today to get that very sound in a couple of different ways to implement it, to either make it really close to the way that SRV would have used it, and some other ways that still can get you most of the way there, even if you don't have all the right ingredients to make it possible. Let's check it out. So if you aren't aware of it, the secret ingredient is a rack unit called the Dimension D. Now, this was something that Stevie came into contact with when he was making Let's Dance with David Bowie. And if you're not familiar with that record, Stevie's playing a lot of the guitar solo parts on it and fills on a lot of songs like Let's Dance and China Girl and a couple of other songs on that album. Now, he was introduced to this because it had this widening effect where it would take the guitar sound and would make it sound bigger, fatter, and just have a slight bit of modulation underneath it. Now, some people might have interpreted this as being a Leslie effect, but it was actually a chorus effect and just set to a very subtle setting. Because on the Dimension D, just like the pedal that we're gonna use a little later here to show how to recreate that, just has some push buttons to basically vary the intensity of the chorus sound. Now, the way that Stevie ran it was a little bit dissimilar to how most of us might use an ordinary pedal board. Of course, he had his classic effects, tube screamers, fender amplifiers, dumbbell amplifiers, all those effects running in front of the amplifier. But then from the mixing board out of the auxiliary send, basically kind of an insert in the mixing board, they would then send to that dimension D and bring it in after the microphone amp. So this is kind of a parallel application of using this chorus and that was brought in again after the dry mic sound of the actual amplifier, almost like a wet, dry, wet setting for what producers and other sorts of engineers would use to sort of create widening effects after it in post-production. And that's exactly what was done on Let's Dance, on Texas Flood, and a lot of the classic Stevie Ray Vaughan hits that we know were all using the Dimension D. Now the question is, how do we implement this same sound and this missing link in a lot of the kind of talk about Stevie Ray Vaughan's gear into your rig? Well, luckily for us, Boss has re-released the Dimension C, which was similar to the Dimension D, but in a pedal format, but they've actually created in this Wazicraft version a toggle switch that allows you to switch over to the Dimension D setting so that you can get a very close approximation of that original analog rack unit in a pedal size format. So today I'm gonna to show you how to take that newer Wazicraft Dimension C, set it to the Dimension D settings with the toggle switch on a subtle chorus, and then show you different ways to implement it to get a close approximation to exactly what SRV would have done. I'm gonna show you how to use it after the line out, I'm gonna show you how to use it after the preamp send, and I'm also gonna show you how to use it in the effects loop to get all close approximations, and then we're actually gonna recreate it in exactly the same way using the aux send and a Dimension D so you can hear what the real thing is versus some of these approximations using this pedal in order to get there. And again, all tied together with listening to some of the actual isolated clips of some of the songs that Stevie Ray used in actual Dimension D on so we can get the full gamut of how this might sound, it demonstrated in real life, and then compared to the actual real thing as we go through this. Now, the gear today, all pretty simple. I got my Fender Stratocaster, 
here that's then going into a TS9 tube screamer, very similar to what Stevie Ray would have used. And then I'm going into my Steel String Supreme SRV, which is kind of giving us a little bit more of that Dumble vibe. And then it's all feeding into the front of a Fender Hot Rod DeVille ML. I'll go into the different ways that we're setting up the DC2W, the Wazacraft version of the Dimension C, as we go through each setting because it changes a little bit from sample to sample. But all the things I just talked about are gonna be the same throughout each clip. All the settings are gonna be the same, amp settings are gonna be the same, etc. So first I wanna look at a song that probably all of us know as a nursery rhyme is the song Mary Had a Little Lamb. Now this is a song that Stevie Ray Vaughan covered and did his own sort of bluesy interpretation of. But if you listen closely to this little section I'm gonna play you, you're gonna hear immediately that he nails this sound where it of course is what we know and love about it, but when you're listening carefully in the isolated environment, you hear that warble to the sound. It makes it wider, makes it bigger, and just adds a little extra dimension, no pun intended, to the sound that's going on. Let's check that out. It's definitely present. I mean, even when he's going for the solo, you can just hear the chorus coming through. It's so present and obvious, and without without the chorus there, you're missing it. Like, here it is without. When we hear it isolated, it's so much more obvious than when you're hearing it in the band mix, but you could tell that without that width in that body, it would be fundamentally different, the tone that many of us came to recognize as the SRV tone from early albums like the one that featured Mary Had a Little Lamb. Now let's take it another step further and listen to, of course, one of the biggest hits that Stevie Ray Vaughan ever recorded, which was Pride and Joy. And if we listen to a little isolated track of this, we're gonna hear immediately that same effect. You're gonna hear that widening aspect, you're gonna hear that subtle modulation, and it just adds a bigness and girth and body to the sound that just wouldn't be there if it didn't have that dimensional chorus on it. Let's listen to that. <laughs> of the notes in sort of the modulation that's occurring between those, without it, it's, it's so obvious. When you're hearing just kind of like the... You're getting so close to that sound. You're hearing kind of just like the, the ringing, even in kind of like the shucking, just like the little comping in between. It just, it's so obvious. It's such a vibe. You can totally hear what it's doing when it's ISOed like that. Here it is off. I'll replay some of that stuff and you'll just hear what a difference it makes to not have it and then bring it back. Even just doing the single note lines, the it's totally not there. We bring back in the chorus and listen to how incredible it sounds comparatively. It is a night and day difference, and you can totally hear why he would have used it on that song. Now let's move on and sort of going in a backwards order, listen to Let's Dance. And this is again the, the record that Stevie Ray Vaughan was doing with David Bowie, where he was playing some of these guitar parts and kind of doing some fills. And this was sort of the earliest incarnation of when Stevie Ray started using the Dimension D on his recorded guitar sound. And we can hear here where he's doing some solo parts and you can just, hear what the chorus is doing. It's just adding such a body, such a, a, just for single notes, it's just bringing so much more to the table 
than what the tube screamer and the amplifier could do on its own. It's just such a special effect. Let's listen to a little bit of Let's Dance. You can hear some of those fills from SRV. and just is absolutely magical. That chorus, you can totally hear it in isolation. <laughs> So hearing Let's Dance really, you know, is the earliest incarnation of what we know Stevie Ray would have used the Dimension D on. And just hearing that isolation, I mean, you could just hear in the solo how much fatter it makes the notes. So you're definitely hearing Nile Rodgers doing some version of, of this. <laughs> And then you're hearing Stevie do some version of like a... It just makes those single notes sound so huge. Now, without chorus, you'll hear that sort of the the width of it is just not there. The the body is not there once the chorus is removed. So let's hear what that sounds like. It just doesn't have the same body, the same width, the same vibe. Again, you can totally hear a clear instance of what the chorus is doing and what it's bringing to the entire song in those solo notes. Now, this whole time to kind of just go through and support, you know, with my mediocre guitar playing, some of the sound examples that we're hearing, I've just been using, again, the Strat, the Tube Screamer, the Steel String Supreme SRV. I've been running a line out box that's then feeding to the input of the DC2W, and then that's feeding a two notes cab amp. And I have just a really simple sort of uh, power amp sound and speaker simulation that's just an EVM12L that's running through a 112 cabinet. It's just a really basic, kind of very clean, linear sound. So I'm not getting a lot of color from running this line out and running this cab simulation because again, I want it to somewhat resemble what an aux send would have done when you were using a mixing board and then mixing that chorus sound in parallel, really trying to keep it as close to that as possible with not adding a lot of coloration from the speaker and cabinet simulation. So that's how all this was run. But now I'm gonna show you several different ways that you can replicate this sound in your rig using as few items as possible. And I'll start with kind of the closest approximation in my opinion, and then move to sort of the easiest implementation so that you have a few different varieties of how you can do it. And then I'll show you how the actual real deal sounds versus this incarnation that I'm doing here with this current setup where I'm running it the most complicated way that I think is kind of closest in a pedal format to what the actual thing is that Stevie Ray used. So let's start with the first one. This is just me, again, exactly the same way that I demonstrated a little earlier as I was kind of supporting some of those songs and examples. I'm running guitar into Tube Screamer, Tube Screamer into Steel String Supreme SRV into the front of the amp. Then I'm taking a line out box. That's feeding the input of the DC2W. Then that's feeding my cab simulation. So it does require that not only do you have a cab simulation, you of course have to have the DC2W and then set to the dimension D setting. And then also you have to have the line out box. So in order to achieve this, you need a couple extra parts. You need the line out box. There are some great ones made by Bray that are available on Reverb for about $50. You also will need, of course, the dimension CW set to the dimension D setting. And then you'll need some sort of cab 
cab simulation. Now I've used the Two Notes Cab M because I really like that. I really like all their options and I use it for a lot of different things separately from what I'm doing here in this video. You could also use something like a Mono Cab Zeus or a Stereo Cab Zeus from GFI. There's so many different options for cabinet and amplifier simulators out there that could work for this particular application. Now, I'm gonna play a little bit more of it just kind of in the vein of some of the Stevie Ray Vaughan stuff so you can hear how it does and you kind of get a sense of how it sounds. So let's check that out and then I'll go to another way that you can set this up. Okay, so we heard that. Now that did again take a few extra pieces with the line out box, the cab simulation, and of course using the DC2. Now, the next way that I would say would be close to doing this is actually just eliminating the line out box. And if you have an amp with an effects loop like my Hot Rod DeVille ML does, you can actually just use the send feed into the input of the DC2 and then that can feed your speaker simulation. You don't have as much control of the volume that's hitting the DC2. Some effects loops might actually clip it, but in this case, it seems to work pretty well, and this might be an easy way for you to do it with one fewer pieces than needing that extra line out box. Let's listen to how that sounds comparatively. <laughs> close overall. I think it sounded good. I think it was, you know, overall pretty close. But let's see if we can even go a simpler way. Now, this is going to require that your amplifier has an effects loop. And because my Hot Rod ML does have it, I'm going to basically just run the DC2 in the effects loop. So it's putting it after the preamp. It's not running in parallel with anything, but it's able to kind of keep it a little bit more separated between the preamp and the power amp and still will give me a lot of the kind of vibe of what it sounded like in more of that kind of line out situation where it's more run like a wet dry system. Let's check this out in the effects loop. <laughs> You could, of course, always run it in front of the amp, but it would be fundamentally different than the Stevie Ray Vaughan sound because he was basically running this whole thing in parallel after the mic sound of his amplifier. Pretty much the same as a wet dry system, again, running the chorus effect after the microphone, after the entire dry signal. Now, I want to show you going back now to the original way that I had had it, where it was kind of the most complicated with the line out, the cabinet simulation, and then having the DC2W run into that. And then I want to compare it to the actual Dimension D, the same way that Stevie Ray Vaughan would run it, running that in the auxiliary send and return, and putting that actually after the microphone, and not using any of the DC2 at all. So we really have a kind of a similarity that we can sort of compare against what the DC2W sounds like versus it all being done, again, on the mixing board side and having all the chorus brought in from there. Let's check that out. <laughs> So you heard today the secret device, the secret pedal that Stevie Ray Vaughan used throughout all of his studio recordings, especially a lot of the early stuff that really cemented him, Texas Flood, Let's Dance. These are all great examples of the Dimension D being used in practice. 
And Boss has a great pedal now with the Dimension C, with that availability to move it over to a Dimension D setting with that toggle switch to really get that sound. You can do pretty much this exact same setup with pretty abbreviated gear. Again, using the line out box, using some sort of speaker and cabinet simulation to collect that chorus effect and then feed it into its own line, either in the mixer, or your DAW, your interface, so you can have a parallel path that you can mix that chorus in in parallel with the dry signal with everything that's hitting the front of your amplifier that's being mic'd. Now, I showed you a couple of different ways that you could do it. I showed you how it sounded versus the actual real deal thing when you're using a Dimension D and running it in parallel using that aux send and return on the mixing board. And I think overall it sounded very close running it the way that we had it versus the way that it was done in the aux send. So there's lots of different options for you to really get either all the way there, most of the way there, or part of the way there and doing it with fairly abbreviated materials. I'm gonna list all the materials that you're gonna need in order to do this in the different fashions in the description below so you can check those out if you're interested in trying this out yourself or you're interested in trying out the new Boss Wazercraft Dimension C. It's a great pedal, sounds incredible. That Dimension D setting is super special and I think really sounds great. And this is really, again, that missing link to the SRV tone that really nobody's talking about. And I hope you found this valuable and insightful and I hope it's something that you're gonna try out. And if you like what you saw today, if this information was useful to you, please make sure you give us a thumbs up, if you like it, you subscribe, leave us a comment about one of the things that maybe surprised you if you're aware of this before or other ways that you felt like you can get very similar sounds that we got today using that chorus in parallel to get some of that Stevie Ray Vaughan type chorus tone. Thanks again so much for watching. If you wanna support, you can join us over on Patreon. We have links below for all the different ways that you can support, including checking out our podcast, checking out some of our pedals like the Steel String SRV that we used today to get some of those SRV tones. And of course, you can buy some of the materials like the cables that we used today over on the rig D .com. Again, if you're interested in supporting us further, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Mason Marangella, aka The Rig Doctor from Vertex Effects. See you later.